Victoria. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm so pleased to rise today to speak to motion M504 concerning violence against women. The motion asks that the Standing Committee on the Status of Women be instructed to undertake a study on the subject of best practices in education and social programs in Canada that prevent violence against women and to report its findings to the House within a year. I appreciate the work of my colleague from Sault Ste. Marie in bringing this important matter before the, the House, Mr. Speaker. And I'd like to take a moment also to commend my brilliant colleague from Churchill, who has uh, also been the, our official opposition critic on the status of women for her passionate speech today, but also for her tireless and excellent work on promoting women's equality, women's rights, and to put an end to, to violence against women. Now, although the rates of violent crime in general in Canada have been dropping for 40 years, the rates of sexual assault and domestic violence remain stagnant. Canada can and must do more to address the serious crime of, women's secure, of, of violence against women and the need for security women should have in our communities. With violence against women, we continue to see high prevalence rates along with low police reporting rates. So we believe that to obtain real results for victims, we should instead be addressing the underlying reasons that prevent victims from reporting assault and abuse in the first place. Motion M504 is well-intentioned, but in our view, does not go far enough. Violence uh, against women, as I will discuss in a moment, is a huge problem in Canada. That was acknowledged very powerfully by the member for Sault Ste. Marie from the perspective of his constituency, and I want, I want to do the same uh, in, from mine. We need a comprehensive and cooperative solution. So well, while well-intentioned, we believe this particular motion is too narrow. Gender inequality is the root cause of violence against women. I was concerned to learn that conservatives have taken that word out of the very mandate of the Standing Committee on the Status of Women. Now here are some sobering statistics, Mr. Speaker. Half of all women in Canada have experienced at least one incident, incidence of physical or sexual violence since the age of 16. Women are 11 times more likely than men to be the target of sexual offenses and three times more likely to be experiencing criminal harassment. Fully two-thirds, 67% of all Canadians, I found this to be the most shocking, say that they personally know at least one woman who has been sexually or physically assaulted. Indigenous women are seven times more likely to be murdered than non-Indigenous women. As of 2010, there are 1,200 known cases of missing or murdered Indigenous women in Canada. Absolutely staggering. Both Amnesty International and the United Nations itself have called upon the Canadian government to take action on this issue without success. According to the Native Women Association of Canada, and I quote, if this figure were applied proportionately to the rest of the female population, there would be over 18,000 missing Canadian women and girls. On any given day in our country, more than 3,300 women, along with about 3,000 of their children, are forced to sleep in an emergency shelter to escape domestic violence. Every night, about 200 of those women are turned away because the shelters are full. Each year, over 40,000 arrests result from domestic violence. That's about 12% of all violent crime in Canada, but since only about 22% of all incidents are reported to the police, that figure is obviously much, much higher. Canada has clear domestic and international obligations to address violence against women, including the UN call for all countries to have a national action plan to end violence against women by 2015. I was shocked to learn by when my, dear, my, my colleague from uh, Churchill's speech that Canada does not have such a plan in the face of all, many, many of our uh, partners around the world having indeed such a national action plan. It's really disturbing. We must look at best practices from around the world, not just within Canada. Not doing so prevents us from learning the best practices employed elsewhere. 
Other countries have had success uh, uh, addressing violence against women. Why shouldn't we take advantage of that expertise? So in the absence of a national action plan responsive to violence against women, our education and prevention programs are fragmented and inconsistent. We must do better. Mr. Speaker, it has to be noted that multi-sector cuts by the Conservative government have been devastating to the status of women agency, status of women agency. but not only that. The whole violence against women sector is left crippled by financial insecurity and lack of capacity to effectively respond to women's needs. The Conservative minister who changed the women's program mandate said, rather unbelievably, and I quote, we don't need to separate the men from the women in this country. This government as a whole is responsible to develop policies and programs that address the needs of both men and women. Unbelievable. The cuts that they have made affect organizations advocating for women's issues, such as Antidote, the nonprofit organization in my community of Victoria, working for the social and psychological well-being of racialized girls and women. The organization's executive director called the changes shocking, and she asked, and I quote, how do you create change when you can't advocate for change? Mm -hmm. Other women's groups, such as the Victoria Status of Women Action Group, SWAG, were forced to close completely thanks to this government's cuts. So obviously a national action plan to address violence against women is being called for by the vast majority of service providers and advocacy groups across the country. Recently, I had the opportunity to hold consultations with great organizations doing excellent work in my community of Victoria. They also called upon us to get a national action plan in place. So in April, I had the great honor of hosting a public forum in Victoria on equality and ending violence against women. I was joined by the official opposition critic uh, for the status of women, member for Churchill. We also had representatives from the Victoria Sexual Assault Center, the Bridges for Women Society, the BC Association of Aboriginal Friendship Center, and many others. An engaged crowd of more than 150 also enjoyed incredibly powerful performances by two local poets, Jeremy Loveday and Morgan Purvis. The evening was emotional, it was inspiring, but more than anything else, it was a siren call for action. We should seize the opportunity to study the possibility of creating a comprehensive national action plan that will make a tangible difference in women's lives. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. The Canadian Network of Women's, Transition, uh, women's Shelters and Transition Houses recently reported uh, that a high level of review of policies, legislation, strategies, research reports, action plans, and statistical data from across Canada relevant to the development of national uh, women, violence against women legislation is available. The network is currently working with 30 partners to create a template for a comprehensive national action plan. We should listen to civil society on this issue, build on the work that they've done. They're two steps ahead of, ahead of us. Let's just get on with it. Canada is doing poorly compared to other OECD countries in preventing and treating sexual assault and intimate partner violence. So in conclusion, Mr. Speaker, New Democrats will support this motion, but if the member is serious about addressing violence against women, we would hope that he would accept going further. We are calling for stronger and immediate action to deal with the serious issue of violence against women and violence particularly against Aboriginal women in our country. We're calling on the government to immediately pick up the motion tabled by the member from Churchill, that is motion 444, and consult with civil society in order to create a multi-sector comprehensive national action plan to, against, to address violence against women. That would include prevention, education strategies, and I'm pleased to see today policies will be included. We want the government to immediately commit to funding, legal aid, shelters, transition houses, social housing, health services, and advocacy and research in order to prevent and treat violence against all women in Canada, including in particular Indigenous women, recent immigrants, and refugees. The important work of violence against women service providers and advocacy organizations in Canada must be fully supported. 
So the incredible organizations like the Victoria Sexual Assault Center, Antidote, Bridges for Women's Society, and the Aboriginal Friendship Centers can continue their important work. In order to obtain real results, we must address underlying systemic reasons women fa face violence in the first place. We must address women's equality from a holistic perspective in order to end this, uh, this, this violence and take action now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat>